Welcome back to the Artie Land Show. My next guest is someone I've known since my stern days. He's the biggest, single biggest supporter of this show, and we love him. Uh, he's an entrepreneur, a unique guy, Noel Biederman from AshleyMadison.com. That, that is the warmest welcome I've ever seen. Well, it's true. <laughs> I mean, you are the biggest supporter, and I've known you since Howard. It's true. I used it's to true. read the commercials over there. That was good times, right? Uh, you yeah. stepped in when he stepped out. He got married, <laughs> and all of a sudden, remember, our Arts' agent, I don't know if Arts your agent, so I don't know. No, no, no. He called me up and said, you know... Um, can't can't do it anymore. <laughs> just, just, just can't do it anymore. Yeah. And I was like, what what can't we do? What can't we do? We're not asking him to have an affair live on the air. We're just asking him to read. Well, guess who ain't married? The fat guy next to him. <laughs> but uh, so you know, I've always wanted to really get into this. What came first with this? Explain what Ashley Madison chicken, is first. Chicken of the all. egg. Chicken of the egg. Explain um, explain exactly what it, it is. It is a married dating service, right? So that phrase confuses some people, but it's for people already in relationships right. looking to to play around, to fool around. And and the, the notion came to me. I was a sports attorney, so anyone who knows anything about professional athletes comes to realize that I had you know professional infidelity surrounding me day in day out I used to get phone calls in the middle of the night you know uh, you know my wife wants to come visit me in Italy what's the problem my Italian wife not gonna like that <laughs> and I was like dude you can't marry someone just because you're playing over in Milan but you so you saw a real I mean this is actually a real service to where it makes people's lives simpler well, it's not like a, a total immoral thing. M monogamy is a tough thing. It's a right. tough road for anybody. And, uh, you know, most people don't want to leave behind their kids, their economics, their extended family. So they look to play around and they were doing it imperfectly, meaning they're going on the singles dating sites. Yeah. They're pretending to be single. They're not. When those women find out, what happens? They get busted. They're yeah, gonna get the bottom line, the biggest argument for this is these are guys who would have done it anyway. Well, you can't convince anyone to have an affair. I could plead with all of your viewers, listeners now, hey, you know, cheat on your partner right now. If they're in a good relationship, they're not listening to me. If they're thinking about it, then maybe I can persuade them that my platform is the best place to do and it. That's all and then, then at that point, if they're going to do it anyway, this could save a lot of heartache. Everybody talks about the immoral thing in this country. Everybody's such a hypocrite. Well, listen, but it's, it's a service. I think controversy equals society changing its values. That's what it means, right? So we used to have right. these values. Now we're changing our values. So that feels controversial. The bottom line is sitting presidents, our favorite athletes, entertainers, like it's your neighbor too. It doesn't make people bad just because they're not monogamous. Oh, and no uh, yeah, we, we've become the second biggest dating site in the world not because I'm this talented businessman, I'd like to take all the credit. It's because we're, we're flawed as people. We're not really engineered for this, and we, we rarely succeed at going against our engineering. But who came up with the technology? Like, like in other words, what this will do is, like... God. Uh, God made the that's technology. That's what I was going to say. Who came up with the, the technology on how to mask this from a spouse or something? Well, to us, the perfect affair was meeting someone of like-mindedness who also wants an affair, not some unsuspecting single, and not getting discovered. So everything we did, you signed up anonymously. We masked your photo. We put it under lock and key. When you finish on Ashley Masson versus, say, on Facebook or whatever, when you delete your profile, we will actually make it like you were a ghost. We'll take back every message you ever sent, every you know photo you ever shared. We actually erase it from our own servers. We do that because we know it's digital lipstick. It's not the lipstick on the collar getting you busted anymore. It's the voice message. That's the worst it's thing. It's the yeah. text message. I am, all that stuff, yeah. yeah. So we're, we're yanking it all back for you. We understand that whole thing, right? Uh, we bill you anonymously. We, we have figured it out. I think that's why right now if we open up some divorce proceedings here in New York. We'll, we'll see Facebook mention this. You won't hear a lot of Ashley Madison mention. We do a good job of helping you keep it secret. I mean, clearly, because you've been in business a long time. and uh, 12 if, years. If it didn't work, but there's no way it would still be around. It, o it only works. It's in 37 countries now, 15 languages. I got 26 million members, and uh, oh my God. I, couldn't, I couldn't be happier. What? I'm happy to sponsor guys like you, guys that I love. Well, and we so appreciate I, it, man. I get to do whatever I want. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's the beautiful thing. Unfortunately, I'm still married, so not everything I want. You know, now, what now, Most things I want. Explain that to me. When you start this, how does that conversation go with your wife? Yeah, yeah I'll tell you, it, it, the best litmus test you could ever have for a partner, right? You turn to them and say, you know what? I want to get in the infidelity racket. <laughs> if they say, okay, man, go for it, that's a pretty good partner. She has been my biggest cheerleader. She she is able to, to uh, understand the distinction between me, the husband, and me, the well, emperor you're, of infidelity. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I saw a market opportunity. It was much bigger than I even realized. And uh, it sounds it. I'm trying to live my monogamous life. I'm doing my very best. Well, listen. So now, what other countries? You just said Korea, Japan. We ju I just came back. We launched into Korea, where it's actually illegal. It's the first country we've launched into where technically a woman can get arrested for it. And my 
thesis was, well, adultery is illegal. It's illegal. Oh. So my thesis there was, well, maybe I'll help them do it more secretly so they won't get arrested. Now, only three people have been arrested in, in the last like four years, so it's not really an enforced law. In is fact, it one of those crazy countries though, where the penalties like stoning well, them to death? Yeah, and, like I didn't want to go. Right, I didn't want to get caned in the butt. Um, well, you know, I, look, I, I, I didn't want people throwing tomatoes at me or screaming in my face. Going that to that takes balls, man. Going yeah. over there. So we we launched it through, but we were in Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and there. They separate sex and marriage more than any other culture. You know, the Judeo-Christian backbone isn't the same there, right? It doesn't come from there. They're not so, as uptight. Well, it's they're not more realistic about there's it. No, there's no Moses came down from the mountains, you know, paradigm, uh, right? Right, it, right? It doesn't originate from them. So basically, they get married to have kids. And to them, sex is entertainment. And so after work, after a hard day, you drink some beer, you sing some karaoke, and you go and you get some. And, you know, their, their, their partners seem okay with it. And there's huge industries there. Like, if you think Ashley Mass is big, like, they've got, you know, uh, and bankers are funding love hotels all over the place. And you can literally go to a bar, and in the side room there, there's a whole bunch of play things going on, just in a traditional bar. Like, that's just the way it goes. Are you at all religious? Have you ever been in your I, life? I am or? not a religious man. Right, right. No. I, I would assume that would get in the way. <laughs> well, maybe not. No, I, I think you got to sit back and say, you know. Is, well, it's in the Ten Commandments of your cow. Well, you know, you, yeah. It's funny. People bring that up all the time. I don't think I've met a single person who can name all Ten Commandments. Oh, well, the, you know, but the one I do know is adultery. Kill, yeah, steal. Even then, I think they meant, you I know, wonder if I could. Women. A good they point. were talking about women. Yeah. That, that yeah. was what we were always. Even where did monogamy come from? It didn't come from some great social science. At some point in time, we owned things. We owned land. We owned... Uh, Vases. We want to be able to give it to our kids. To do that, we had to force women to be monogamous. That's where it came from. It, di it didn't come from science. Now, what is what's your biggest obstacle, like argument-wise? Is it religion where people don't want to do business with you? Yeah, you know those groups really obviously dislike me. But I did a debate for ABC News in a mega church in Dallas in front of 5,000 congregates. I'm happy to tell them about the America that they're not aware of. The America that goes to strip clubs four times as often as they go to Broadway shows. Right? That, that's the real America we inhabit right. and and right. and, and, and wow. expose. That and just talk about my business. I'm not trying to convince anyone or persuade anyone. But my biggest problem is censorship. You know, at mm. the end of the day, all I provide is a platform where people can communicate. Yes, the majority are in relationships. There are some single people on the service. So, you know, Match.com, the majority are single. Some are married, you know, on their service. Is Match but, the number one thing? Uh, well, they're yeah. the biggest things. They're not right. the problem, though. The problem is all the opportunities Match has are not afforded to me. And I think that's a form of discrimination. Absolutely. That's business discrimination. Yeah. And it's a form of censorship because... You're the bad guy. I, right. I'm the bad guy for letting people talk about their bad marriages. And that's crazy. Like, again, I get paid no money for the actual sexual encounter. I just let them talk to one another. And so right. I should be able to advertise on NFL football games or do all the things that I want to do. And I'm just not allowed. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, one of the hardest I ever laughed at, at on Howard, right after the Tiger Woods scandal came out, the next day you guys were right on top of that. Like, oh, yeah. He should have used Ashley Madison. And then, and if you think about it, he should have. Uh, we did that Tiger Woods mistress beauty pageant, which people still talk to me about. Like, if I'm in L.A. and someone recognized me, they're like, remember that Tiger Woods? On Howard. Like, yeah. Oh, what a people, great idea. People yeah. love that. The press, yeah. the press was lined up out the door, you know, those kinds of things. But the whole point of those things is to sit there and say, yes, they should have used this. But also to sit there and say that, you know, Tiger Woods, we loved him because he could swing a golf club. We didn't care if he was a good or bad husband. So I why certainly does it didn't. matter? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, absolutely. Who cares? Uh, but 26 million people, that is, that's growth, man. It's good business. It's yeah. good business. Well, you, like, so, uh, in Japan, uh, you launched, what, eight months ago? And you, uh, nine months ago, and in about eight and a half, nine months, we hit a million members. So just yeah, by way of comparison, it took me <laughs> five years to do that in Canada, right? And that's my hometown. <laughs> Right. That's, where, that's where people didn't kick me out of their offices and the whole thing. So well, Canada's fact, uptight in a lot of ways. I know yeah, from doing stand-up up there. Compared to, compared to other places in the world, yes, it is conservative. But by, by incubating the business there, I did create an exportable business, right? If you'd built this business for the folks in L.A., who knows if people in Tacoma or in Tokyo would have ever adopted it. But I think because Toronto was my home base, it did become a universal product. It's really interesting that way. So what is your goal, though? For I mean, just keep world going? Domination. Just world, keep going, right? To the moon. Well, think about it. If you and I were building a singles dating site, in India, it would, it would have to involve parents. In, in China, money and family names. In Korea, they date totally differently. So it's hard to build a dating product that's universal, but a cheating product it's pretty easy. <laughs> it turns out it has universal adoption. So we can go to India. We can go to France. We're in right. all those places. And, and, and that it makes us potentially the largest dating service on the planet. What's uh, So what kind of infrastructure do you need to keep this going? Like how many employees Massive. do you have? Uh, yeah, like hundreds, hundreds, mostly engineers, but also full-time customer care in all those different languages. And then also 
I have to uniquely put my bunkers offshore. I don't want anyone tapping into my data. No NSA messing, no government subpoenas. What about lawyers? Do you have lawyers on retainer? I got lots of lawyers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good with lawyers. I'm a former lawyer myself, so, so I understand So it's a big company. Yeah. We're a huge company. Yeah. I know maybe, you know, maybe you can uh, help us with the IPO. I think it's about time we go and raise a billion bucks what about and that? show the world. Hey, that's interesting. It could happen. That would be sweet. I don't know if it could happen in America in this day and age, to be honest with you. You know, bankers are pretty uptight people, too. But by all stretch, if you looked at our business with a blind on it, right, you just looked at the numbers and the growth and the membership, you'd be like, oh, my God, this thing is worth billions. I want to invest in it. Yeah. You unveil it. Right. And they're like, I, how do I explain this to the wife? How do I lie down in bed at night and say, yeah, honey, I just invested in Ashley Mash. And she's like, why, why do you think that's a good business? I don't understand. Why do you think that's a good business? I don't think it's a good no. business. It's not a good business. But There's so much worse things in the world. People are, I mean, listen, sex is the great equalizer. Like, you just, it's, un, it's so annoying. You said uh, bankers are, are conservative. What hypocrites? The biggest hypocrites oh, on the yeah. planet. You don't have to they're, tell they're, me. Yeah, they're getting laid every, everywhere on the planet behind backs of their spouses. They could use this for crying out loud. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.